Hello and welcome back to part 5 on the series of developing a video game, turn-based strategy game AI for my new upcoming game called Shattered Throne. I'm joined once again by my son Bennett. Hello again. Well, I've noticed it's the same map and again, same yeah. stuff. Of, except it seems that you took off the little, like, color things, uh, squares everywhere. Yeah, besides the obvious change of finally getting the production graphics for yeah. the, the terrain done. I have to say, it looks awesome. Thank you very amazing. much. Amazing. Yeah, the artist I um, got for it is amazing. He's done all the sprite work as well, and very pleased with that. Um, well, besides that obvious change, the differences now are that the blue player is the, the new player, and there's basically two differences that they have from the red player. I can also see that you change the names, Eva and Dave. You're right, the new player is called Eva, and Eva will actually try to make the best choices as far as attacks. Like previously, we kind of did attack, um, unit moves in random order. Now, Eva is actually computing what the best move is, and will favor attacking the same unit once again. So it takes best advantage of the combo point system, which was the problem um, that we identified last time. About the squires. Right, because the squires require that you attack them multiple times. And right there we see that um, Eva once again is making some better choices. Yeah, Eva seen it well, but again, yeah, it seems like Eva will win because it's a lot more defensive than usual. But, I mean, but... I mean, I've noticed, again, I mean, uh, this, uh, again, no one's paying attention to the two bottom houses, and also Eva's cluttering up again. Right, the, there's, the units are still a little bit too sticky. Um, I know how this game ends, Eva actually ends up winning, despite wow. the advantage that the red player has on this map. I know. Which is one reason I didn't change the map after yeah. all. I see you got the house. The, I mean, the, I mean, some of the houses that red really, I mean, that red usually gets at around like the fourth or fifth turn. Mm -hmm. Except I'm wondering why isn't any in all the other videos in this video? How come no one's paying attention to the bottom two well, houses? I think the problem is the river. The river has such a high cost to move across that the units aren't properly moving around the river and seeing that path. So yeah. they tend to ignore it. Oh, so it's sort of, of like that they, I mean, that they have to be like facing it to see it, but the river is sort of like a wall. So then, but since they're trying to ignore the river at all costs, which they are, have, haven't touched it at all, well, um, it's like that they can't see, I mean, the bridge, so then they, so then it's Right, it's like too far away impossible. based on their movement rate. Um, the other difference that Eva has is for the first time, they try to, as far as unit building, it will have intelligent unit building, which it tries to keep a certain ratio of the different unit types yeah. and pick the best place to build. Later in the video, I don't know if we'll get that far before I cut it, um, when Eva starts taking the uh, fortresses from Red, um, she'll actually build, have a preference for building on those new fortresses that are closer to the front, which is good. Yeah, I can also see that, that unlike the other blue characters, it's actually moving its little, I mean, mob of... Um, Spear guys. Oh, yeah, or pikemen. And um, she's actually, actually moving them forward so then it, it can be offensive and not just defensive. Right. And so basically, yeah, so it's now actually sort of obvious that Blue will win because there's just, like, so much and not much red players at all. So it lo really looks like that Eva definitely will win, except... And you can see right there in that move as yeah. Eva wipes out almost the entire red army yeah. with um, smart decisions. Except there's also something else I noticed. What's that? None of the computer players are using their spells. Right. In fact, um, that's one thing I hope to add next version is, the, much like Advance Wars, the little stars you see accumulating at the top can be used um, to cast spells for the, each side. Yeah, but I'm also wondering, but, in how come you're, I 
I mean, how far will the little stars go? I mean, because they're already going off the little turn flag. Will they just keep on going and going? Yeah, right now, it's 10 is the maximum amount of stars you can get. In. Well, are you going to make either the maximum amount shorter or the flag wider? Well, it depends on how the game turns out in the end. Right now, I'm planning on only going up to the max of 10. And spells, there's usually a spell that costs about 3 or 4 stars, and another one like 6, 7, or 8 depending on um, how powerful they are. Yeah, see, Blue's again getting, yeah, Blue's getting the reds, reds thing that could get, I mean, that it can get on turn two really easily. And it's, and now it just got one of the, what's it called? The castles? Yeah, the castles. It's actually getting them. Um, it's, it's basically like the players got switched. I mean, the blue player doing what the red player was doing in the first few videos, and the red player doing the opposite. All right, well, um, once again, thank you for joining us. Um, you can check out more at www.checkmarkgames.com. Thanks for joining us, and we'll talk to you next week. And, we've also, and we also refer 